ako sa inyo lahat. Kaya nyo, pagka mag-alas dito na, PMS ka, bukas wala pang pasok. I can call the understand na yung attention is fine to me. Okay? So what I will do today is I will dispense with that introductory speech. Kasi naghanda po ako ng mga introduction before my presentation. But because of the time constraint, I will go straight to the subject. Karamihan sa kasabihin mo yan, nasabi yan ng Anticipator Amaro. Pero I will just put me to the table. Ang paksa kong pakuusap ko natin ngayong hapo ay ang Philippine Maritime Industry. Yung impact nito sa ekonomiya ng Pilipinas, problema sa ating bansa, impact sa inyo, mga potential CPR and officers, at impact sa pakalata. At dalong lalo na, ano-ano mga sektor ang kumakatawan sa Philippine Maritime Industry. Slide please. Nakikita nyo yung aming na yan, yan ang tinutuloy namin pillars of Philippine Maritime Industry. Crewing and money, of which many of you are involved. CPRS, education and training, so napak-important yung component. Port operations. You know this, hindi namin malamang, ano ba talaga dapat natin itawag yun sa Philippine Maritime? Is it an industry or just pay to call it Philippine Maritime Commerce? Kasi pag sa ito Maritime Commerce, it's broke. Lahat ng datong lumalaya sa Philippine Waters, we have five registered or local registered, they are the first thing doing something in Philippine Waters, therefore they are engaged in Philippine Commerce. Cargo transport by international vessels. Isa rin itong komponen, isa rin itong sangkap sektor sa Philippine Maritime Industry. Shipbuilding and shipyards. Alam naman natin itong pagkawa ng plato at shipbuilding. And maritime tourism, one of the most toil, forgotten, least one, most forgotten sector of the Philippine Maritime Industry. So yun ang ito yun, ang ang mga sektor na kumakatuwa sa ating Philippine Maritime Industry. This is a continuing study. May mga figures po ang ibigay sa inyo na 2014 pa. Mahirap kasi kukuha ng mga figures dahil may mga session information na hihirap na kami kulit. Kaya, nonetheless, kung sila 2014 figures ito, it will give you an idea of the present situation. Okay, so let's go to crewing and money. Sabi ni Anastasia Amaro, the Philippines is a money capital. True. We are the number one source of ratings. Pag sabi ng ratings, the position below officers. Pero kaya po, ang China ko pa habo. The number one supply of officers will be China. When it comes to supplier, to supply of ratings, it's still the Philippines. We have a 35% share in the 1.5 million global maritime force. We have a statistics of a 30% share. But we want to be conservative. 25% share in the Philippines, so 1.5 million global maritime force. Tawag ko dito sa mga kaya-kaya-kaya-kong sea-based migrant Filipino workers. A majority of Filipino sea pairs are deployed in bulk carriers. Ano yung bulk carriers? Dalawa yan eh. Containerized vessels at non-containerized vessels. Kasi yan yung non-containerized yung mga bulk, bulk, and bulk, bulk. Karamihan na mga sea pairs na nag-deploy overseas nasa Bawang Kenya, mas malaki ang prosyento ng mga CPRS na nasa Bawang Kenya kaysa mga Montella Pesos. Ang iba, nakadeploy sa Supreme Pesos, etc. Please be important. Total OFW Casimites for 2016. Mas lalo yung OFW yung sun-based, land-based, and sea-based mo. It's 26.9 billion dollars. Share of sea base. 
5 dollars si Gareth Stone is 5.6 billion. So out of 3.9 billion of contribution, the YFW, mga CPMs natin, mga CPAs, na complete ng 5.6 billion dollars, or 20% of 36.9 billion dollars. Ang contribution ng CPAs, YFWs, sa 2,000 GDP natin, ang GDP ng Pilipinas ng 2016 is 305 billion dollars. Ang percentage-wise, ang contribution ng CPAs o FWs sa ating GDP is 1.8%. Remember, we are talking here of the gross investment product. If we have the 305 billion dollars in the year 2016. Pero, despite the GDP growth of 6.8% in 2016, as remittances of the CPAs, uh, of WS was 3.8% lower than 2015. Bakit? Bakit percentage-wise, ang contribution ng ating mga CPAs as against 2015. Okay, next slide, please. Here are figures. Filipino CPAs in 2015, 406,531. Dabak ay tayo rin. Chipping, chipping, ang bago. Pero tinan nyo, Filipino CPS deployed in 2016, 304,329. Ang laki na yung pinagsak. Okay? 2015, 406. 2016, tignan mo sa 304. 83, so 25%. Ano mo may dahilan? Okay? The press global shipping. Tutu yan. Okay. Dapat ito rin na ni Chief Engineer Amaro. Na meron po ito sa kanya. Ayaw mo. Na despite the crisis, tumawin pa ang bilang ng bago. I remember correctly. Ang problema, tumawin na ang bilang ng bago pero ilan doon ang ginagamit. Okay. Remember. Remember. Meron na yung crisis sa shipping. The volume of global trade has been bumaba ang global volume of trade. So pagka ganun, ang shipping ang sasama. Okay. Yung freight rates, hindi nila may ipas, bumabang sa kaya. Okay. So, nangyari pa, nagulat ang Hanji. Hanji is the eighth biggest container fleet in the world. Paano bumagsa ang isang napanaking container fleet? There must be something global. Bumagsa ang Hanji. Bagra. Okay. Ano nangyari sa mga kumina? Ano nangyari sa mga CPRS boarding hanging tests? Mergers and consolidation. Dahil nang pagsak ang global trade volume, anong ginagawa ng bato? Nag-merge. Dahil nang mga ito ang mahina, hindi yung kumikita. Nag-consolidate. Isa na itong bato, isa na lang. Okay. Pag naging isa na lang ang natong bato, what happened? CPRs that used to work three vessels at any given time. Okay. And still the competition from East Asia and Eastern Europe. When you say East Asia, China, China, Eastern Europe, Poland, Hungary, you know, I hope that you will be able to look at the TV. She pays OFWs versus total OFWs. Ilan na OFWs in 2016? 2,240,000. Ang she pays in 2016, dahil na pumagsak, 304,329 or 30.8% ng total OFWs in 2016. Next slide. CPRS, education, and training. Tayo ngayon ang important ito. How crucial is it? Huwag natin pag-usapan ang revenues na ibibigay ng mga education institutions sa bayan. Pag-usapan natin dito, ano ba ang kailangan ng hindi nyo? 
Father, has no other competent skill to be done from that day. Okay? Education and training is regarded as the building blocks of sea parents. Yan ang pinaka-ingredient yun, para maging competitive. Sabi nga ni Mr. Cody Sikilisi, o kaya ko, maritime education training must be of high, high, and consistent quality. Always put that in mind. Maritime education training must be of high and consistent quality. You know, you are very lucky. Dahil alam naman natin ang maraming mga barit ang education institutions ang napasang mga natin. Marina, basically Marina, as the secret maritime administration. This particular law was signed March 13, 2014. Tinaman sila eh. Alam nila ang ita kapag ka na-blacklist ang Filipino senior senior. So, ang marina ngayon, the extent of the training is a little bit known. And to that, I said, your examination of Marine and Engineering Officers. That the examination of Mahawa is Professional Regulation Solution. Marina na rin yan. Okay? And sa check, the head and chairman of the technical panel on Maritime Education is Marina. Although they check yan, quality of the Commission of Higher Education, the head of the technical panel as far as Marvel education is concerned, is my next slide. Ano na challenge sa inyo? Need for continuous education, onward training to remain competitive. Yung onward training yung problema nila. Yung maras, atas mo na hinang anak, especial natin yun. Kulang daw ang karamihan ng onward training. Yung pag sa'yo mo na ito, pwede na i-substitute sa onboard training. Ang mga hinahal na is onboard training pa kasi pag onboard na hindi ka rin kasi experience sa sea. Sa inyo na ito, sa inyo na ito lang yan. Pwede it's a good substitute, but many countries would still opt to have onboard training for potential safety and nursing officers. Ang training, may competency level. Compliant, of course, given. Comply with 97 SD7 as a method, I should be able to harden the MSOD. The last MSOD was done in November 2016. And you know, when I had a chance to talk with Chip here about him, I had forgotten totally. I asked him, may I look at the result of the MSOD that was conducted in November 2016? Hindi sa mga sagot, dahil ang sabi niya, wala pa, pero they are confident, and I'm also very confident, that I think this time we will be able to pass it. Who, maybe, who initiated all these measures to upgrade the level of skill of the Filipino CPR? Well, Chief Engineer Amano is one of those proactive, instrumental in keeping pace with international stars, but we can also discount the contribution of Dr. Maximo Mejia. Dr. Maximo Mejia is also one of the innovators who took steps to modernize education and training in the university. So both Maximo Mejia and Jim Ingenomaro were our instrumental and paving the way for the upgrading of the skills of the Filipino civilians. Next slide. Port operations. Nina depended on China port operations as a sector in the Philippine maritime industry. Because our Philippine ports are not in. It's a little bit of foreign vessels. They serve as vital direct force in the supply chain. We state them. Contribution of the PPA revenue, 13.2 billion, this is 2015 figures by the way. 13.2 billion of contribution of PPA is our national government. And in 13.2 billion, the government has a group of people, MICD, the government MICD, 
Purina International Container Climate Sportina. APA sa Apato, and Patangas Container Terminal. What are the challenges? Need for more aggressive modernization program, particularly in the Alpha Shiri Law, that look fair to them and that are not given that sufficient aid to our economy as far as poor operations is concerned. Poor state is no place in infrastructure projects. We need bigger core facilities, road networks, communication equipment, internet, etc. No matter the import and export volume by your, your information to market. And this justifies why we are considered as one of the most active economy in Asia today. Uh, import volume grew by 14.59%. That's 2,000 meters over 2015, while export volume was 4.3% better than 2015. What does this signify? As volumes grow, kailangan natin ng bigger po facilities. Kasi kapag kaya natin po facilities, we still remain the same. How do we be able to accommodate the growing body of trade that Philippines has over the other countries? Next slide, please. Of course, our passenger and bureau of customs. When it comes to all operations, we cannot avoid mentioning the Bureau of Customs as one of those that might play a key role in the efficiency of port operations. Outdated rules for port operations, model processing in some case operations, immediate implementation of the process for the decision target act. The CMTA is an act which attempts to modernize customs operations. So government has to speed up the implementing rules of the CFDA. The challenges, of course, as I mentioned, of data rules because it translates to high processing costs. Next slide, please. Car transport by international vessels. You know what I'm going to say about this is not in the Egyptian material matter. Currently, they are trying to modernize domestic fuel. The Thomas National Park on the Memorandum Sinta on the importation of passenger ships. And for the if you want to import passenger ships for domestic shipping, Ella, not more than 20 years old, and more than 300 GT. In the government of Marina, but it's an attempt to modernize existing fleet of passenger ships in the Philippines. The government has some guidelines for the availability of tax exemption. So if you will be availing, if you want to import passenger ships, if you want to obey that exemption for passenger ships, we have the guidelines of Marina. Ayana, if you want to obey of that exemption for passenger ships, the passengers, the passenger ship should not be more than 15 years old. While you will be allowed to import passenger ships, not more than 20. You can only be entitled to a bad exemption of that particular passenger ship if the passenger ship is not more than 15 years old. They can only import, but if not have that exemption, they can only be entitled to a 15 years old in the passenger ship. Next slide. Ano kailangan natin sa port at sa kongreso? You know, a careful fresh by your officers kayo. Dahil ka natin experience niya. Pag kami face ng accident, illness, injury. Maraming abogado, huwag na sa inyo. May claim kayo ang base employer. Masabi ng abogado. Ako nang bahala. Basta, pag nalala tayo, bigyan mo ako ng 30-40% ng reward na i-award sa inyo. So, kapag si Feller, kung rasa ng abogado ay ito lumalapit sa kanila, papayag. So, pagka na-award sa kanila, o, amalit na sa kanila, siguro, 40% hindi na abogado, 60% na lang. E, meron pa siya mga misiyan yung expenses. Kaya yun sa mas malaki, hindi na abogado. Sa kinita, nasa-tawa ko si Kaya. Ang dalimabalik ako, 1-0-7-0-6, inihindu na yan. 
it will be illegal for any person to solicit those kind of uh, uh, practices. Ang pwede lang yan i-claim, abogado, is not more than 10% of the total award. Not more than 10% Ang ganyan ba lang, hindi ko pa sa dati naabuso. Cost me 1278 of the parentage. Hindi ko alam kung ano, alam nyo ang iisip ng parentage. Pag parentage ko, siguro alam nyo, you navigate the ship safely to the port. Ang problema, ganito, kaya mga yun ko ako maabuso. Demanding exorbitant charges. Pagka mataas ang pilotage service, ang ibig sabihin ng isa lang, you are increasing the cost of doing business in the Philippines. May bilang kayo sa kongreso. Okay? Opening up pilotage service at least ang open to all who wants to be pilots. So para ang isang kanoon ng market force, kung sino pinakababaga, kung sino mas pinaka-efficient, siyang bahala ang isang kukunin sa force ng mga beso. Hindi ko pa asin ngayon, isa na kasi po rin sa siya kumakarap ang value case, kaya they can easily monopolize the rates. House Bill 460. Sa ngayon kasi, yung classification ng lesson, there are seven classification societies na nagkakas ng vessel. Baka ito ang classification society, ano yung ibig sabihin ito? Eh, nagkakupit siya eh. They compete. So, ang misal, kababaan ng presyo. Pero ano quality of service ang nangyayari? May isa, kasama ang kondisyon ng barko, papasa. Kasi they offer the lowest rate, ang problema, they all have the ocean, the house, yes, it's a fail. So, house bill for 60, isa na lang. Pero ito, house bill pala, I want to try it out. Isa pala, ito, bill pala, nadapa ito sa mga proseso, baro, baro mag-iisang batas. Pero there is a good way, to just have one classification to sign it before. House Bill 456 and 1286. Sa problema ng Pilipinas ngayon is compliance with international convention, SOLAS, safety of private seat, signatory manager, MAPCOP, professional program, pollution passage, signatory manager, convention of global, state party, dami ang pinag-ibig na, kung naman sila, we have not yet fully enforced and fully implemented these conventions. Ang effect ng to, yung ating international competitiveness. Pag nalaman ng ibang bansa, ang ibang beste, na hindi tayo compliant, they will shy away from the Philippines. It has influence upon knowledge that we are not compliant with our existing international competitiveness. Next slide. Conclusion. Okay, as you can see, the maritime industry is one of the major drivers of the civil economy with its strategic position. The Antipeto provides not only a large pool of qualified and technical skill, CPRs, but also highly experienced in the maritime field. And I want, I, I advise all of you to sustain that role, maintain a high level of competence and skill because that pays you to pay me. What structure development, the whole structure, demand for logistic solutions, okay. increase of international import and export commerce demand for plasma is projected by significantly. The challenges to the major sectors of the Philippine market industry are not in some mountain maritime challenges. As long as there is a prompt, ambiguous, government action in excel support from the other entities. That's all. Thank you.